Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Monday, February 23rd, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Well, a Saudi newspaper is claiming that Islamic State might be getting its hands on Libya's chemical weapons. But there's just one problem with that. The New York Times already reported more than a year ago that the last of Colonel Gaddafi's chemical weapons had been destroyed. Now, the newspaper reported on February 2nd of 2014 that the U.S. and Libya used a transportable oven technology to destroy hundreds of bombs and artillery rounds filled with the deadly mustard agent, which American officials had feared could fall into the hands of terrorists. Now, of course, now that the U.S.-trained and Gulf Emirate-funded Islamic State has threatened to take over Libya in the wake of U.S. invasion of the North African nation, the London-based Arabic newspaper Ashark al-Assad says that the chemical weapons remain in Libya and they are in danger of falling into the hands of the Islamic State. Now, this newspaper is a media asset that's controlled by the Saudi royal family. Hmm, so no worries about propaganda there. Now, the Times of Israel reports extremist militias in Libya have taken over stashes of chemical weapons which belong to the late ruler Muammar Gaddafi. The sources expressed concern that the non-conventional weaponry, which included mustard gas and sarin gas, could find its way into the hands of Islamic State fighters. Now, this is in stark contrast to what the New York Times reported just over a year ago. They said, the disposal of the last of Libya's chemical weapons closes a chapter that Colonel Gaddafi began in early 2004 when his government turned over a vast cache of nuclear technology and chemical stockpiles to the U.S., to Britain, and to other nuclear inspectors. So it looks like we are witnessing another round of weapons of mass destruction, of course, to get people behind going and attacking the Islamic State. They've got to ramp up these chemical weapons that the New York Times reported a year ago no longer exist. Of course, the media has been really hyping up in the last few weeks how ISIS is going to use Libya as the gateway into Europe. So this is just even going to further be the whole chemical weapons claim, the whole ruse they can use to ramp up the fear even further. And another thing that the mainstream media is hyping up is the supposed terror threat now facing us here in America at malls across America. The Department of Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson made the media rounds this weekend. He was warning shoppers at the Mall of America to be particularly careful after a terror group singled out this Minnesota super mall for attacks. A law enforcement official, however, reacted to Johnson's remarks, saying there's no indication of an actual threat against any malls in the U.S. And another DH official clarified Johnson's remarks later in the morning, saying... Secretary Johnson didn't say that they should not go to the mall. He just told shoppers to be extra vigilant and that security was increased. So here we have the Department of Homeland Secretary just casually saying, oh, you know, you might just want to just be cautious over some terror attacks at the mall, but go ahead and go to the mall. So why would he just so casually throw that out there? Well, of course, We've been seeing it just running in cycle all over this weekend and on the mainstream news. It, it makes for great news to say that there is a terror threat at the mall. But it's also conveniently timed with the fact the Department of Homeland Security uh, is set to have their funding expire. Now, Republicans, as you'll recall, held off on funding the Department of Homeland Security in that huge cromnibus bill that they passed at the dead of night this past winter that they had to pass or the whole government was going to shut down. But they held off funding the DHS to use it as sort of a bargaining tool. Now Republicans are saying that any bill funding the DHS has to include a rolling back of Obama's unconstitutional executive uh, amnesty actions that he took on immigration. And of course, Dems aren't having any part of it. Now, the administration claims that the agency's increased funding is necessary to protect the homeland. But records show that the DHS has continued to increase its spending on furniture and office makeovers as its budget has been increased. Now, this is a review of records on the official government spending website by the Washington Free Beacon. They show that the agency has spent nearly $150 million on office furniture 
and makeovers since Obama took office. This is the fiscal years 2010 through 2014. Each year under the Obama administration, DHS funding has been increased. But Jay Johnson is going on five talk shows on Sunday just to warn America that the security, the national security of the country is at risk. So we must fund the DHS. Meanwhile, the borders are wide open. Borders are wide open and our Texas governor is actually using taxpayer dollars to fix that situation. Now, Texas Governor Greg Abbott says that more than 20,000 illegal immigrants have crossed into Texas since the beginning of the year. Abbott said on the CBS show Face the Nation that since January 1st, we have had more than 20,000 people come across the border apprehended, unauthorized. The problem is not going away. And of course, those are just the 20,000 people that have been apprehended. Who knows how many people made, made it across without being apprehended. Abbott said he's gonna up the ante, adding more than 500 more DPS officers, more Texas Rangers, more technology, but he's gonna be using Texas taxpayer dollars to secure the border and do the job that the federal government isn't doing but must do. Abbott says that more than 800,000 illegal immigrants currently live in Texas alone. Now, he said, we needed to see, we're going to wait and see if Obama sticks to his promise. One of the promises that he made was that he was going to uh, repatriate these people as soon as possible, because you'll recall that the promise that he made does not extend to any illegal immigrants who entered the U.S. within the last five years. But of course, that part of his plan, that message did not trickle down to the thousands here 20,000 since the beginning of the year of illegal immigrants who are flooding into the country with that last ditch effort, hoping that they're gonna be able to get their free ticket into America without the possibility of deportation. But Obama is also promising work permits and social security numbers, which is what the GOP fears will be impossible to roll back once it's in place. Now, a federal judge agreed with that last week and he called a halt to that entire process. Now, Breitbart is reporting about more details coming from the Center for Immigration Studies. They are calling it a shadow work permit system in which the Obama administration has issued millions of work permits beyond the levels mandated by Congress. CIS reports that between 2009 and 2014, the administration issued 7.4 million new work permits. This is above and beyond the annual 1.1 million new legal and 700,000 guest worker, uh, workers that are admitted into the US. So 7.4 million more than what they said, oh, we're gonna just go ahead and allow this and we'll stick to the plan, right? Well, they say, they say the fastest growing category of these issuances were, were to illegal aliens, tourists, students, and family members of temporary workers. The largest categories of work permit issuances had an approval rate of 90% or greater. So 90% of people that applied for these work permits are coming into the country, being granted access, and CIS's Director of Policy Studies writes in her report that this huge number of work permits is going to inevitably reduce opportunities for US workers, damage the integrity of the immigration system, and it encourages illegal immigration, which is of course, it's of course we know that, but the administration wants to deny that that is going to be the effect of, of doing this. Now, Austin is just one of dozens of cities that are rolling out the welcoming mat, hosting welcoming committees for illegals. This is to help illegal aliens adjust to life here in the United States. The cities are partnering with the group called Welcoming America. It helps illegals find employment and housing while helping people who were born in this country understand and appreciate their new neighbors. Welcoming America touts itself as grassroots, but is in fact supported by President Obama, the United Nations, the Clinton Global Initiative, the Carnegie Foundation, and the German Marshall Fund. 
the knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com Oil of Oregano Formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market. Sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy-to-use capsules. You will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue. Wild crafted from the Mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire. This winter season, it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano. Now available in our limited first run at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Well, if you've been paying attention to the mainstream media today, you'll notice that they have been reporting on the Stingray cell phone towers. Of course, that's a sophisticated surveillance technology that police across the nation are using to sweep up your cell phone data. And of course, they're kind of pushing it across like, oh, this is a terrible thing, and they're probably using it a lot more than they say. Whatever will we do? But of course, they're not reporting on it so that you can actually stop this from happening and do something about it. They're kind of putting it out there so that now we know it's a de facto surveillance system that's in place. The Washington Post is kind of taking the angle that the secrecy surrounding this police surveillance equipment is undoing a lot of cases. This particular case that they report uh, comes out of Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, a young man and his friend robbed a small-time pot dealer using BB guns, and under Florida law, that was robbery with a deadly weapon. Would have been a sentence of at least four years in prison. But before his trial, his defense team found out that they had used the secret surveillance technology. And of course, as we've reported, because we told you about this last year, us conspiracy theorists here at InfoWars, uh, but we reported that rather than put it out there and let people know that this surveillance technology was being used, police were just doing a plea deal or else they were dropping the case altogether because they would have non-disclosure agreements with the Stingray company so that they would not have to let taxpayers know how much money they were spending on these programs or how they were utilizing these programs. But now we're seeing that it's causing a lot of people to get their cases thrown out because they didn't get a warrant to sweep up all of this cell phone data. So of course, that's an issue. And then you have other uh, states like uh, California and Silicon Valley, the police there are, they're saying, we really want to be able to use this Stingray technology. We, we really want these things to catch the bad guys. So now, they have to put it out there. And now they have to, you know, the cat's out of the bag. People know that these cell phone towers are being used. They are sweeping up your data, but they're not gonna roll it back. They're not going to stop violating your civil liberties. They're not gonna do that. But no, they're just gonna let you be aware of it so that you know it is this de facto surveillance. They no longer will need a warrant to use it. If you're a criminal, then you just should know that it's out there. And they're gonna say, once again, if you're not doing anything wrong, then you've got nothing to worry about. Why do you care if you're being surveilled and constantly spied on? But of course, when the tables are turned, when there is an app that's out there that allows users to not only report traffic accidents or where there's uh, not a huge backlog of traffic, but to also let 
other users of the app know when there is a police kind of set up waiting to, to trap people, people use this Waze app. Well, police are completely against it. When you turn the tables on them, they're not having it at all. This is Jakari Jackson for InfoWars.com. You guys probably heard about the Waze app recently, W-A-Z-E. It's a phone app that allows you, among many other things, to pin the location of police officers. So you drive them down the street, you see a DUI checkpoint, you see some type of speed trap, you can alert your fellow travelers to this, uh, to this obstacle. And police departments, sheriff's departments in some places are getting upset about this. They say that the app endangers their officers, it's an invasion of their privacy, you know, all the normal stuff. And I can understand their concern to an extent because, of course, we see recently uh, the police shootings up in New York with the officers. And it just alerted me that there's a hazard coming up here. But as I was saying, you know, you have the police shooting in New York, the two seated police officers. So I can understand that kind of concern. But at the same time, these police officers, these uh, sheriff's departments, they're using things to surveil you and me. You know, they have uh, cameras downtown in places like Austin, Texas. And they say that you have no reasonable expectation of privacy outside. You know, of course, you have uh, all the tracking capabilities in your phone and your computer, other things as well. They have people on social media monitoring your post. If you say something out of line, they may uh, pay you a visit. So I think it's a little hypocritical for them to say that they can surveil us. But if we want to uh, take a look into their activities, then there's something wrong with that. So we're going to use our app. We're going to drive around here for a little bit, see how accurate this thing is, and see if we can actually find the officers using this. Police reported ahead. And there he is, right there to the right. Okay, so here we are, right outside the Cabela's in Buda, Texas. And the app is telling us that there's an officer up here going north into the Austin area. So we'll drive by and see if we can see him. He should be on our right-hand side. Police reported ahead. Okay, just got our warning. The officer should be right up here to our right. I'm not seeing him. So maybe this update is a little outdated. I didn't see the officer there. Okay, so my review of the app, it does work. It does tell you uh, police locations, among many other things. Like I said, the app is also made to point out traffic hazards, things of that nature. But, you know, to any officer who would say that, you know, the, uh, the app is giving away their location, we're right outside the Austin Police Department, and the Austin Police Department is not on it. And if you take a quick look, you can actually see the windows is still shot out from when somebody came up here a couple months ago and opened fire on the police station. I'm not encouraging anybody to do that. I'm just saying if somebody really wants to find out where these officers are, they can easily go to a, a headquarters of a police department or sheriff's department. So by and large, yeah, it's just a, a piece of a much larger app, so I don't think it's anything to get really worked up about. Uh, the officers are you know, on patrol as they always are. I'm sure they'll be on guard as they always are, but I don't think it's anything to get really bent out of shape about. You can find more reports on InfoWars.com. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. 
Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. And don't tell me that I'm a weirdo because I'm upset about this. I'm just sick of dishonorable trash. Supreme Cobra Commander! Your failures! You think I'd sell my family out like you, dirtbag? This is Jakari Jackson for InfoWars.com. We're being joined today by Cody Wilson. You guys know him. He's bringing us this breaking news update talking about his ghost gunner. Now, you guys recall Cody. He's been at the center of the, I don't know if you want to call it the controversy, of the printable gun phenomenon. He's produced many firearms, many uh, parts of firearms to go along with this. Also, he's been known for the dark wallets. You guys know him from that, the people who keep up with the Bitcoins. But today he's going to talk to us about the ghost gunner uh, processing. And when he tries to ship it out, he's now having some uh, pushback from FedEx when he wants to put out his product. So, Cody, can you start from the beginning and tell us basically uh, how you got to the process of now making the ghost gunner and what problems you're having when you're trying to ship it out? Yeah, the, the Ghost Gunner was, thank you, by the way, Jakar, it's, it's a pleasure to be back. Yes. The Ghost Gunner was a joy to engineer, and we spent the last few months uh, really engineering out and, and conducting our manufacturing of the device. And for the past few months, it seemed uh, clear to me that I had a FedEx freight and FedEx, FedEx business shipping accounts. I would just use FedEx to fulfill uh, the machine when I wanted to ship it to the consumers who, who purchased the machine so far. And this is, I did not think this would be controversial because FedEx uh, caters to the to the gun industry, has NRA, FedEx Advantage program, et cetera. Uh, and anyway, when I finally solicited them for the ultimate rates to do business to consumer for my business, they began to demur and they began to make excuses. And then ultimately last week they said, despite my submitting all of the legal work I've done, all the clear memorandum and stating how the law was obvious, that this was just a tool that people can make to make their guns, which is constitutionally protected activity, they said, because people can use my machine to make firearms, they would not ship my machine. They would not offer me any rate at all. They do not want my business. This is a CNC concept, a milling machine, which notably is good enough to take an 80% AR-15 lower receiver, take it to 100%. You can make an AR-15 in the comfort of your own home, unserialized, without government surveillance. But you can do a number of other things with it because it's just a mill at the end of the day. It is just a tool. It is just a tool that you can use to make what you want. Defense Distributed sells it and, and gives software that you can use to make gun parts with it. But FedEx is very uncomfortable with the idea that you could use it to do this. Have you ever had any other type of pushback? Because I know you've made uh, actual you know, weapons. I, I guess you don't ship those around. But have you ever encountered this type of opposition before? Well, that's a great that's a great question with the FedEx example. I have a federal firearms license. FedEx will ship guns for me, right, and have done that before. FedEx will ship guns all over the country. Are they trying to tell me that this... What I'm doing here is now more dangerous than a gun because theoretically that seems to be what's happening. They're more uncomfortable with the idea, the abstract idea that anyone can have a gun or that Eric Holder has them on a short enough leash, uh, that it, this is more dangerous to them than hazardous materials and guns, which are things that they will ship. On an AR-15 rifle, the lower receiver uh, is, is the part that holds the trigger group and to which you can insert a magazine, uh, which feeds the rest of the gun, but also legally it's important because it's the regulated component, the serialized component traditionally of these guns in commerce. And so by my assertion here, my claim, I, I think, is that though FedEx is trying to hide behind color of law, really they're, they're more interested in the political implications of, the, of my device than its legality. They don't like the idea. They are uncomfortable with the idea that people could have such easy access to guns and will perform by extension what Eric Holder and the administration cannot do, which is I, I, this is why I believe InfoWars audience might be interested in this, where Eric Holder has been unable to succeed, FedEx is comfortable 
you know, rounding out the situation. That's right, because I think what you're mentioning here, Cody, is Operation Choke Point. Uh, they're targeting various uh, gun owners, uh, you know, banks, things such, such as that, trying to stop people from being able to uh, process, uh, whether it's firearms, ammunition, things to that nature. So you're saying that that's what you feel that you're experiencing at this moment? I, I think it is, it is easy to paint that picture now. And I'll tell you, I, I didn't really lean on this when it happened to me earlier, but my bank, uh, my banking network, my, my credit card processing network back in November dropped me. Uh, other, other things happened to prevent me from more easily taking payments along the way. And now, ultimately, this shipping agency won't fulfill for my product. What we're finding is a constellation or a, a closed loop of businesses and government working together to agree by consensus that there's only certain ways you're going to be able to get the gun, and they will not admit the possibility that you can constitutionally make these things for yourself without surveillance or without commercial or ATF intervention. Is anything that you're involved in illegal? Absolutely not. The law could not be clear on this matter. You can have a tool, you can possess a tool, you can make a rifle without a serial number in these United States, even today. These people don't even want to admit that this is still a possibility in 2015. It seems like with you, they're hitting the grassroots and now coming after the small businessman and trying to stop your process. Jakari, it is, it is everything right now. And, and people who own AR-15s, they know, especially in January and February of this year, the ATF has gone after CNC manufacturer of AR-15s. The ATF this month controversially began to ban the second most popular stock of ammunition for the AR-15. Uh, large corporations and banking networks will not permit or are trying to ghettoize our activity. It is, it is an attack from all sides, all divisions of the quote-unquote civil society to prevent good people, the rifleman, from his birthright. And I think the InfoWars audience should know that I'm under attack as well. <laughs> they should know that I am making a legal product to, to allow them to make a rifle, and I'm probably going to have to smuggle it out of my own city because the, the, large, the large shipping cartels are in league with the administration. And I honestly, today, I do not know how I'm going to ship it. This is, this is a huge matter, and I think they should know what these companies think of their Second Amendment. With this, with this wall of collusion, Jakari, between the government and these large corporations and the kinds of talking points you see on TV all the time, basically the, the elite only admit that there is a right to buy arms, not a right to bear them, not a right to make them, uh, to own them, to transport them. They're trying to, to ghettoize and marginalize and cut away at every possible corner uh, of, of these activities. And this is, this is a wall that I have bumped into that I think few people are aware of People should know that there is strong resistance right now to the idea of the private manufacturer of firearms in the private world, not just the public world. How many orders do you have right now? Uh, Jakari, I have over a thousand orders for fulfillment right now, and I don't know how I'm going to do that if I have to go, like go to retail, <laughs> go to retail windows and ship these one by one. If, if someone won't cater to my business to fulfill my product, this is an easy way of of de facto putting me out of business. And let's say you eventually do get some way to uh, ship these across the country. How could people get a hold of this product? Uh, people can go to ghostgunner.net. They can go to deftis.org. Uh, it's very easy to explain the product. We demonstrate it. We explain what, what it does, what it can do. Uh, they can order online. Very simple. Uh, we accept Bitcoin. We accept credit card, PayPal. Um, it's easy to buy it. I just got to tell you, it's getting <laughs> difficult to ship it. So I definitely thank you for coming out and telling your tale, Cody, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. Well, thank you, Shikari. Thank you for giving me a platform to share my story. That's it for the show tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. And you can also become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. Your subscription allows you to share your username and password with up to 20 people at the same time. And of course, you're going to get instant access to 18 years worth of content that you will not find on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching the show tonight. And we'll see you here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere?
Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. Energy dependency is also always a big thing. Look at wars. How do they fight wars? One of the major things they do is cut off the energy in whatever form it is to the particular country you're going to war with. We did it with the Japanese in World War II. We embargoed they couldn't get any oil. We would have been even more uh, successful against the Germans in World War II, except the Germans had already figured out how to create synthetic oil. And by the way, in the German synthetic oil, there was no uh, uh, fossil fuel used. So I question whether oil is actually a fossil fuel. I don't believe that it is. I think that's made up in which to get people to believe so that they can control the pricing then that there's only a finite amount of it. The Keystone Pipeline isn't pushing us towards energy independence at all. All it is doing is going to make huge money for the oil companies as they export that oil out of the United States. The simple way to look at it, if Keystone was going to provide oil for us, they'd be loading it into trucks. But what are they doing? Keystone is going down to the Gulf of Mexico and it is being loaded onto tanker ships. So unless them ships are heading to LA or San Francisco, say goodbye to all that oil from Keystone. It's heading to China. There's your key to it right there. If it was coming to us, it would be loaded onto trucks and you wouldn't have to build a pipeline all the way to the Gulf. But because they need to load it onto ships, the pipeline goes to the Gulf to put it on ships so the oil companies can make big money over in China. We use so much oil, the United States of America, there is no way that we can provide it for ourselves without seeking it in other countries and other places throughout the world. Okay. And that's the way I see it. What is energy dependence? Well, it's basically slavery. We are slaves to oxygen. We have to have it. Plants are slaves to carbon dioxide. If you go back to the most ancient form of warfare, practiced for more than 6,000 years, it's siege. Shut off a city's water, shut off their food. So through oil dependence in the last 100 plus years, to Standard Oil and the Saudi Arabians today, we are slaves to OPEC and the cartels that control oil. And so they've done everything they can to block the development of independent, uh, renewable new forms of energy like solar wind. The problem is the very same system has allowed the few innovations that have been made to be corrupted and wind power farms and solar systems that have been built by government have just turned into inefficient boondoggles for the establishment so that they can basically make the new clean energy systems fail to discredit it. We're seeing right now Saudi Arabia and others try to bankrupt Russia and independent U.S. oil producers uh, by driving down prices. So there's also a lot of uh, manipulation within the oil market itself. But when you begin to research uh, artificial energy dependence, you're really hitting at the heart of how the globalists control our planet today. And that's why I encourage people to develop their own solar systems at their home that's off the grid. Government encourages certain solar systems or wind systems that are hooked directly into the grid and the system and are highly regulated. What we need is truly independent off the grid systems like Jesse Ventura has set up in Baja, Mexico. I'm Alex Jones, head to head with Jesse Ventura. Tuesday, February 24th. Watch Alex Jones and Jesse Ventura go head to head on energy dependence. It's the Alex Jones Show. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.